Hello everybody, welcome to the 2022 Rhino Crack Lock Installation Module. I'm here, Eric Colby, with Joe Geisner. We are craftsmen that have been installing and doing restoration repairs for over 20 years. Uh, this product that has came out in the last couple of years is superb, and we will show you how to prep and install the material. Uh, first off, the environmental condition, make sure you are in a safe location, you have your area cordoned off, you have your proper equipment in place. Uh, we'll just go over a couple things here. We have our HEPA pulse back that will help us with the dust collection. We have a dust collecting half inch drill bit uh, that will suck up any dust for the sides for the drill boards. We have a grinder with dust collection assembly with a 0.8 uh, thicker diamond blade for doing our cross cuts. Uh, we have writing utensil and most importantly we have some common sense. So Joe you're gonna have to leave. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, first off we'll start off by talking about spacing. Uh, similar to all repairs, uh, the bigger the crack means the more material and the closer the stitching uh, that you will need. Uh, previous standards, um, there was uh, other options out there such as steel that would corrode and, and have a, a less length of a shelf life. Uh, we're pretty lucky here that this product is out because uh, we can keep the spacing uh, with greater distances and it will help with the vertical and horizontal uh, loads that are gonna be keeping uh, your material in place sort of fall apart. So uh, what we've done here is we went ahead, we measured out and went with our width of our carbon fiber pieces. Uh, some of the guys in the field, they like to call these dog bones. Uh, they, they are a certain length and then they are larger on the sides. Um, Joel can identify that what we've done is we have not just a typical Frankenstein stitch, um, the manufacturer is recommending to run angles and they, that way they're not totally perpendicular. That way it can give additional uh, strength with the stitching. Um, what we'll do first is we're going to do our cross cuts using our diamond blade. Once we make our cross cuts, we will drill one side of each of our cross cuts. Once we drill our one side, then we'll take our material that we're going to apply We'll set it down in place and make sure that our second drill hole is lined up properly so we're not honing out and doing things twice. So uh, what I'll do is I'll hook up this grinder, we'll turn on the vacuum, and we'll start making our cuts. What we've done is we've marked our blade so we're cutting, we can maintain 5 eighths depth. So once we cut 5 eighths in depth on our concrete crack lock material, we will drill one half inch hole on the side. We'll set the material in place and mark where the next hole will be drilled. You will need to overcut slightly to compensate for the curvature of your diamond blade. Cutting and drilling is complete, we'll need to thoroughly clean the location that your epoxy material will be installed. Now we have the holes drilled out, the substrate cut, and we have uh, cleaned and latent three 
substrate, we're ready to apply the epoxy. So what Eric's doing right here is cleaning out. We had to start with a new tip, make sure that we got a full mix. We don't see discoloration. And now we're ready to go ahead and put it inside the craft that we cut. You see he's starting on one side of it from the dumbbell side and working the air out. That's a key way of doing it. I'm keeping the material a little bit lower so we don't have too much compression when Joe installs the crack lock. Where there is a crack present, we will install a little additional more uh, material. Uh, you can see that there was a previous repair at this location. They did inject down uh, beyond our cut. Okay, here is our crack lock system that we'll be installing. There's not a proper up or down on it. It's uh, as long as it goes down this way, it could be this way or vice versa. Both are the same. So we'll be installing this and it gets 180,000 PSI strength. What we're going to do is we want to embed this inside the epoxy and get it all the way down. And we want to see that epoxy ooze over the top so that we know that we're getting uh, epoxy all the way around the actual locking system. And once we have it all the way down on both sides of the dumbbell, we know it's installed correctly. Nothing sticking up. We're going to give it a little bit of time to see if any air will release if it tries to raise up. It's common on, on, uh, on flat substrates. You could see that, and then you just work one side with the other to uh, correct that from popping up. And it looks good. We're going to go ahead and scrape the access to a smooth substrate. In some situations, um, if it's a pedestrian walkway and they're worried about slipping, uh, when the product starts to set up in about 15 to 20 minutes, you can add uh, sand granules on top to add a little traction to this. But right now, this crack is fixed. Awesome.